Welcome back. In this module, we'll discuss deployment challenges, good and best practices, and the notion of the PPM maturity model or PPM3. When thinking about project and portfolio management, you can also think about it as project management for the people. With the onset of tools such as Project and SharePoint Server and online, collaboration and the centralized resource management become the norm. And more people have insight and visibility into projects and resources, basically who do, who's doing what and when. Now some formulas for success with PPM is to consider people and process management. We want to make sure that we're focused on the individuals that are going to be working with the team and the processes that they're following and make sure that we're not spending too much time on technology and methodology, focusing on change, knowing that with a tool such as Project Online, Project Server, that there will be change and we need to plan for that. Now some scenarios to avoid is trying to do too much too soon, as well as managing one big project. Instead, we want to focus on smaller incremental goals as we move through the different phases of working with Project Online and not spending too much time on methodology or the technology. Now, from a success perspective and doing it right, a couple things to bear in mind. One is making sure that we understand and communicate to the stakeholders and set proper expectations around the implementation. We also have to consider the organizational culture. How are they doing the work today? And making sure that our implementation is in alignment with that. Also managing commitments. We want to make sure that the resources that we're going to be using and having commit to our project, that their management understands what we're doing. Understanding the process, communicating and articulating the process is extremely important. That's part of this tool. You need to spend some time there. Also scheduling competencies and making sure that we spend time and, and commit to our project managers improving how they are managing schedules. And then promote the solution. Make sure that leadership and upper management are behind this implementation so that everybody knows that as an organization, you're committed to its success. Now, this notion of the PPM maturity model is something that we came up with a number of years ago, and it's a model that essentially advocates a phased approach to implementing Project Online and Project Server. And what it is, is it's a focus on smaller goals that are managed through phases. Each of these phases are then scrutinized and, and reviewed as the organization moves through, making sure that they essentially pass each of the phases. What this does is it ensures a minimal amount of change to the users. It sets the expectations to sponsors and leadership, and it reduces the upfront cost, both from a time perspective and, of course, from a financial commitment. Now, the primary phases of PPM3 focus on project management, right, as being the central and primary phase, then moving us through resource management, then eventually getting into collaboration, and then task, and eventual timesheet management. Simultaneously, as we're going through resource management and collaboration, we start to look at reporting as well as lifecycle management from the perspective of project requests and approvals, and then eventually moving us into portfolio management and then integrating and moving those out to additional departments or business units. Now, this notion of success criteria is essentially saying that each phase has a unique set of success criteria in order to move them through to the next phase. For example, when looking at the project management phase, we want to make sure that all projects are properly statused before we move them into the next phase. This is a critical part of working with 
Project Online and Project Server is that projects are kept up to date. When we think about this first phase, the project management phase, this is a phase that is focused on the project managers, making sure that they're using the tool properly, making sure that all of their schedules are represented within the tool, that they're properly statused and baselined, and that they are using the sites. This also implies that their schedules are to a certain, at a certain level. We want to make sure that they're applying good practices. We're looking for areas like orphan tasks, tasks that are don't have relationships, for example, okay, unassigned tasks, overuse of constraints, for example. These are all areas that we'd be looking at in order to move them into the next phase. So this is a focus on the project managers, making sure they're using the tool properly. In the resource management phase, this is where we want to start analyzing and reviewing resources. Basically, we're allowing the project managers to start building teams, bringing resources into the tool, but making sure that they're assigning properly. We look for areas of variable resource assignments where they're resource loading properly. We're looking for over and under allocations, essentially assigning resources to projects and analyzing them properly. From the resource management phase, we move on to the collaboration phase. In this phase, we introduce the tool to the team members. Here, we want to make sure that the team is using PWA in a proper way, uploading documents, for example, raising and managing issues, and collaborating with their fellow team members. Basically, it's an introduction. From the collaboration phase, we look for task management. Here, we want to allow the team members to start tracking their updates. So project managers will be expected to publish now, get their assignments into the hands of their team members so that their team members can report progress. Now we're approving those updates and making sure that they go into the schedule. From here, we would move into time management and then eventually into workflow or process management, portfolio management, and then eventually a line of business integration. Now, in terms of the deployment process, a couple considerations here. We want to talk about when you roll the tool out, who should you be bringing onto the team? What should you be looking for? And we can think about that in these different phases from discovery through rollout. When you think about initially deploying the tool, think in terms of a prototype. This is where you are bringing in the appropriate individuals to make sure they sign off on the implementation. And you want to think in terms of a prototype largely because the tool is completely blank. There's no configuration settings within it. There's nothing there. So it's hard to run a proof of concept without anything to really measure, right? So taking a prototype approach means that you can take what you've discovered and move it into your actual implementation. The next part of it is making sure that you do have the right team and making sure that leadership signs off on allowing you to use those team members as you implement the tool, right? And that they are advocating what you're doing. The right team members will also ensure that you have the right technical personnel to help you with answering questions about the tool itself. In the discovery phase, you want to gather processes and sample documents. These are typically what you're currently using to manage projects. And this gives you a rough idea of what the requirements will be. This will then lead you into more detailed sessions so that you can move it into the actual configuration of the tool which takes us into Divine. So defining will allow you to take that, those rough requirements and then build it out into your, into your hard requirements by interviewing certain personnel, different managers, project managers, and, and departmental heads. This will allow you to define the actual configuration settings that will go into the tool like custom fields and views and reports. 
At this time, if it's on-prem, software should be installed. If it's project online, licenses should be purchased and set up. Then we move on to the design phase, which means that we are taking those requirements and we're building them out into the tool. Right? We're actually designing and, and configuring the environment. This is also where instances will be provisioned in the case of Project Online or additional servers will be set up for an on-prem environment. From here, we move into pilot. At this point, you want to have your first adopters trained and working with the system and really testing out the configuration settings that you've configured and identifying your production environments and your development environments. From pilot, we will freeze any of the configuration settings. We're basically making those changes during pilot that we've discovered. So we want to surface any issues or any changes that need to be made. At that point, we are then in rollout. So here we've determined what are we going to actually use within the tool, what configuration settings that we have, and we can start train, training users on those settings and those features. From rollout, we then hand it over, right? You should be able to release some of your administrative staff at this point, and you're now into support. Hopefully you have a service level agreement related to how support tickets will be handled and, and how they will be managed. But at this point, you are in production.